Yo. Do I have this one? Just got a green light. Yep. That's all. Went on. All righty. Welcome to Talking Shit with Seth and Earl. I'm not Earl. I'm not Seth. Here it is. Episode nine. It's been a couple days, hasn't it? It's been a bit, hasn't it? Since yeah, it was last it's been like one. a week and a half since we had yeah. another one. So what's up with you, bud? Woo! <laughs> I've got some shit, man. All righty, lay it on me. Um, well, I saw Jesus. That's it, mate. That's it. Uh, basically. Oh, you went to church or? No, I had a vision. I had a, some shit like something happened. Um, but okay. Uh, this. Hang on, let me give me one second, guys. I'm going to set a timer so we know where we are. Saw Jesus. Yeah, boy. 60 minutes. All right. So. All right. Give me the background. uh, Saw Jesus. So. Physically, literally. Yeah. In my house, Jesus stood before me and then disappeared. Okay, all right, all right. All you right. gotta give me the background. Yeah, so I'll go way back to the mushrooms. I think that's it relevant to this story. Back in November, I bought some um, Amanita muscaria mushrooms from the recesses of the internet. Are those the ones that are hallucinogenic? Yeah, the legally, they're legal in this in this country. So those. are... So you, ha- I didn't know that there was uh, legal hallucinogenic mushrooms. Yeah, in the US. yeah. So this, the hint, hint, wink, wink. Yes. Yeah, so psilocybin, that's the compound that's illegal. If you have psilocybin, anything that contains psilocybin, it's illegal. This mushroom, the Amanita muscaria, it's the same mushroom that's on Super Mario. You know the, the one, mus- the red ones with the, the red one with the white dots. Those mushrooms. Huh. Um, they don't contain psilocybin. They contain uh, ibotonic acid and muscimol. So, ibotonic acid, yeah, I've looked into the, I Because obviously, if I'm going to take the damn thing, I need to know what it's going to do. Yeah, yeah. Contains. You don't want to just like go take a mushroom. Yeah. And... So, don't take a mushroom that you don't know what it is. <laughs> um, anyway, huh. anyway uh, it contains ibotonic acid and muscimol. Now, the thing with this mushroom is the ibotonic acid. It's like a, it's like a coffee. It's like <clears throat> caffeine. It makes your go, makes your heart pound, makes your thoughts rapid, that kind of thing. But the muscimol is the opposite, complete opposite. It like chills you out, makes you mellow, makes you sleepy. What is the what is the chemical that causes the hallucinogens? It's the it's the muscimol. Muscimol. Yeah. So what you want is you want more muscimol because you get a better trip because you're not like a crazy hyper or whatever. The way to get the better muscimol is you can convert the ibotonic acid into muscimol. If you boil it and make a tea, you can convert 80% of the ibotonic acid to muscimol. So if you boil these, what are the mushrooms called again? Uh, Amanita muscaria. Amanita muscaria mushrooms. If you boil them into a tea, you convert the ibotonic acid into muscimol, and muscimol creates a that's, hallucinogenic yeah, effect. That's the good shit. Intent, wink, wink. So, um, I bought these mushrooms after months of completely research. Completely legal in the U.S., not like, you know, yeah, federally illegal and illegal state. Legal. Mm-hmm, completely okay, all right. Because yeah. it's not, it's the psilocybin that's completely it's illegal. Sil- okay. Mm-hmm. So, I did this. This is illegal. Yeah, legal. Legal. It is, yes. Okay. Okay, so. We're learning here. So, I bought 32 grams online for like $40. So roughly, just a little bit over a dollar a gram. Yeah. Five grams is a, a good trip, apparently. So, the problem is <clears> with <throat> mushrooms... Hey, you had never done this before November? No, no. Okay. So the thing with mushrooms is you can't really measure what's in what mushroom. Oh, yes. That makes sense. Do yeah. they have, like, a a rough measurement that they can tell you? I think they do, but I don't know. So to be safe, what I did is I got 30, the 32 grams, which is, like, Five's a good. It's five's like, a good trip. Yeah, yeah. Five's a good. But trip. to be safe, so I got. I six, got thirty-two. I got six trips worth. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, 
you know, just to try. Just, just to, to be safe. Yeah, just to, just to when you safe. said safe, I was thinking like, oh, precautionary. You're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like to make sure I get hot. No, because I wanted to fucking trip balls, man. I wanted to... <laughs> As they say, I wanted to see Jesus. <laughs> I want to see the dark side of the moon, <laughs> so, brother. So anyway, 32 grams, right? And um, so I couldn't measure them. And at the time, I didn't really fully understand how to make the tea. So I didn't make tea. When you, I thought you said that it's just boiling them. It is boiling them, but if you boil it, it like tastes like shit. And then some people add lemon and all this stuff to make it like less taste like. Yeah, shit. if it tastes like shit, I would want to have but a taste of lemon or something you know, covered up. As you know, sense. I cannot cook or use the stove. Well, you don't know how to boil water, but. Mate, I'm not. St- I'm not. T- <laughs> if it requires the kitchen, I'm out. I shit you not. That one's easy. Yeah. You just put well, it on high with water in it. Well, Don't do it without. But we'll see. Anyway, so I didn't. I didn't opt for the boiling the ibotenic acid out, which looking back was a little bit dangerous. Wait. Repeat that. Sorry. I didn't boil the mushrooms. I I just ate the dry mushroom caps. Why is that dangerous? Because too much caffeine can kill you. Basically, so you don't know how much ibotonic acid is inside this. It could be full ibotonic. Sweet ibotonic acid. acid is caffeine. It's a caffeine effect. Oh, so it okay. makes so your you heart do race. want to convert some of the ibotonic yes. acid into muscle. Yes, as much as you possibly can, really, because that's the stuff that you don't want. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I said it was kind of dangerous to just eat them dry, because you you can't measure the mushrooms, so. One mushroom could have fucking 80% ibotonic acid and only 20% muscovol. Hmm. You don't know how much is in it. Because there's no way to measure or tell what compounds are inside of it. Okay. So looking back, it was a little bit dangerous. Cause, so you didn't... Because I have like I have high blood pressure and like my heart's not that good. So <laughs> I didn't think about that. Those seven-mile hikes that we used to yeah, take. Uh, that's, that helped me the, out, yeah. In the dead of summer... Yep. They seem like a good idea now, though, don't they? Yeah, yeah. That's why you almost got heat stroke that time. Yeah, so um, I didn't boil them. So anyway, my wife was, like, obviously very concerned about me taking 32 grams of mushrooms. So I told her, Makes I'll, sense. I'll just eat one cap and see how I feel. <clears throat> so we ate one cap. and then, Wait, did she do it? No, she, she, she's scared. So okay. I ate, I ate one call cap. Call scared, call it cautious, call it smart, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so I ate, <laughs> I ate the one cap yet, and uh, we went to TJ Maxx. Because <laughs> uh, why not? If you're going to go to TJ Maxx and you're going to be the guy. In the yeah, you're not going to go sober to TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Men across America. Yeah. Why would you go to TJ Maxx sober? Exactly. So we went to TJ Every dude in America has just like, got a fucking bottle, like a mini bottle. Something in the car when they're going, they're like, go, 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 go. <laughs> TJ Maxx. All righty. I can now withstand TJ Maxx. Yep. So we went there and that, and I started to feel some kind of, you know. Something. Yeah. It was like more kind of, I was so chill. I didn't really care. Usually I complain when we're at TJ Maxx quite a lot. But it was good. I was like, just chilling, you know. Not to get on a sidetrack, but when you're at TJ Maxx, like, do you do, like, annoying shit to your wife? I'm just like, can we fucking leave now? She's like, oh, but what do you think about this? I'm like, just put it in the car. Let's leave. I just hate this place. Let's go, please. I get annoying with her. Like, what? I'll take, I'll find, like, I'll hide. And then I'll jump out at her. Or I'll, like, pick up stuff and annoy the living shit out of her. Kind of, like, put that mental block in there. It's like, when we come here, I'm going to get upset. So, like, we don't That's come there. Good. I mean, at least you're entertaining. So I'm bored out of my mind there. I'm just like. I'm going to speed up this process. But at least you're entertaining yourself. Anyway, I went to the Asian Max. I felt a bit of a buzz. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened next? We came home. And then I felt... I, I didn't see anything. Like, so I said, this is not... This is shit. Like, it's, that was a dud cap. I need to eat more. So, Wait, how long... <clears throat> how long was this duration? It was like two hours. Two hours. And they said, the, the peak of the mushroom trip is three hours in. That's what they said. So you didn't even wait to the peak. You're nah. just like, no, 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 this isn't working. Nah, you know your body. I'm not going to see. If, I, if I'm not seeing the, even a glimpse of summer, I need more mushrooms. So I had two more. First time ever doing this. 
I had two How more. How can you argue? I had two more at that point. <laughs> One didn't work. One's not, my, you know, I need two more. So I had two more. Uh, again, started to feel a little bit drunk, I would call it. Drunk, happy, calm, I don't know, excited, all at the same time. <clears throat> and then... You were buzzed. Yeah, and then a couple of hours later, mm, this is not where I want to go. I want to see fucking the unit. So now you're two more hours in. Yeah. You're four hour mark. Yeah. After you, And you already taken an extra two buds. Yeah. That's what they call these? Buds? Caps. Caps, sorry. Mm-hmm. Bud is something else. Yeah, so then... I had, like I said, I had two more. So then I wasn't feel, really feeling it. So then I just got the whole packet and started eating them like uh, potato chips. And they don't taste good. They taste like garbage. Now, the mushrooms that grow psilocybin, they grow in cow shit, right? Yeah, they can. What do these grow out of? Trees. Trees. Oh, okay. They've got a, what's it called? What's that word? When they're like symbiotic relationship yeah they've got a symbiotic that's it i was thinking of venom but i couldn't think of the name <laughs> because venom is a symbiotic uh yeah so they've got a symbiotic relationship with trees so you find them near trees or connected to the roots of trees or some shit but huh. it's difficult to farm them as well these ones but yeah i've looked in cow shit for those other ones i can't find them anywhere looked everywhere mate uh Earl, quick question when you say you've been looking in cow shit, yeah, yeah. In, well, I, went, I mean, you do know that most cows are only on private property. Oh, not in uh, in England. You see, cow. Well, you can walk across the fields. In England, what's the farmer going to do? Chase you with a machete? You can outrun him. That's right. They're not allowed to have guns there. In America, we got guns here. Yeah, if in I haven't been doing. I would not just go randomly seeking cow, out yeah. somebody's cows. Nah. In filtering through their shit farmer might get upset yeah he might come out with a gun and he does have you can't outrun that guy so yeah they will brush 30 30 it's a yeah but in england you can you can walk right up to the cows you know and where are you a... shitting at mate there's another story we used to like fucking like well this guy oh anyway whatever i'll go back to the cows okay so you have searched for is, is the syllabus illegal in england yeah yeah Okay, it's so illegal. it's kind of universally, yeah, not accepted. It's not illegal to grow. It's not illegal if it's grown in your garden. As soon as you pick <clears> it, <throat> you're now in possession, and then you broke the law. They do wash them off, right? Before they eat them. <laughs> well, I'm, I, you know, I don't know anything yeah, about it mushrooms. Gives you a bit of flavor. I don't know. I, I mean, it's shit. I would hope they do. They taste bad though. So even the so even these uh. What was the name of it? Amanita that? muscaria. Amanita muscaria. Mm -hmm. Even the Amanita muscaria mushrooms taste bad. So bad. So bad. Like, like on a scale of like, uh, you know, best thing I've ever eaten to like Earl's cooking. Like, below, what is below Earl's below cooking? Earl's it's not even bad. on a scale. It was terrible. And I only, like, the first time, the only reason I continued to eat them is because I was, I was going to see some of that night. Okay, so we've we've established it tastes bad. Got a good background on this. You're now four hours into this. You've had three caps. Let's see what happens next. So, that, so I started to feel a little bit drunk, but I knew my body again, and I said, this is not going to be enough. So I ate the whole packet. How many is in the packet? A lot, but it was like 32 grams worth. How many caps? Like... 45 or more so you'd only you'd only eaten less than it was a it was like a bag of chips like <laughs> fucking cap this big you hadn't eaten like maybe i had three out of 45 of them like 15 like one fifteenth of the total bag and now you're just like fuck it we're gonna finish this off we're gonna have a good night tonight so you you've now downed 45 caps of Anima muscaria. Amanita. Amanita muscaria. What happens next? So what happens next is um, not a lot. Not a lot that I can report about that. 
that's a downer. Uh, it was a downer. <laughs> it was so shit. Uh, well, maybe it sounds better if I let me explain what happened. Okay, okay. So, um, I was playing video games. I was killing people on the video game. Of course. But behind, okay, so there's reality, yeah? Like, I can see the wall in front of me, that wall. Behind it, I could see a different visual thing. Now, yeah. This is the same night that you took the mushroom. Yeah, that's after I started just eating them like crazy. Yeah. I could see behind the wall into this veil. I don't know what it was. Like, you know when you close your eyes, you see those lights and shit? Well, behind the wall, that's where my mind was, behind the wall. Um, and also, another another thing that I got from the mushrooms was, I got, in my mind, yeah, I can hear myself thinking, that's me. I can con I can control it. There was a s two other layers of my mind. My thought, my thoughts. There was two other places. Uh, this is not even like it doesn't make any sense to the sober man. But it's like the, there was a void place where thoughts came from before I got them. So you're consciously seeing like three or four other dimensions. Yeah, but it, it's not as great as it sounds. You're just aware of them. Yeah, I was just aware and, and I could control my body and my feelings and I could control for the most part. I, I mean, I lost a little bit of motor function, but like I had a microphone and then next to my microphone I had a glass of water and I went to grab the water, but I grabbed the microphone to drink it. Then I realized, oh, microphone. So then I got the cup of water. That's kind of the reducing motor skills. But, it, I mean, it wasn't that bad. It's not like, you know, when you get drunk and you <clears> really <throat> lose control. Yeah. It wasn't like that. So you're just kind of fucked up a little bit. Yeah. Just a little but bit. But not so bad that you're, like, rolling on the ground, you know. Not all. Pissing all over the walls or something. Nope. I could fully control my body and I could control my thoughts for the most part, except these thoughts that came from the void because they weren't my thoughts. All right. So overall, on a trip, what would you give this? A one to ten. Well, on a on a conscious trip, it was probably like a two. Oh, that sounds kind of stupid. It was shit. But listen to this. This is where it gets amazing. Okay. I went to lay in bed. It was like fucking 12 o'clock or something. So mm -hmm. I went to just go to sleep. I didn't sleep the whole night. I was living... I was living... Okay, so I laid down here. Yeah. My wife's next to me and she's like making jokes about shit. Like she's trying to get me to talk because she's recording me doing, you know, talking and she's going to laugh at me tomorrow. Uh-huh. Kind of thing. <laughs> healthy relationship kind of thing of course um, anyway so she's trying to get me to talk and she says oh give me the look because I told her <clears throat> I'm getting thoughts from somewhere else like from this void and she's like oh give me the lottery numbers so I said do you want the lottery numbers from my thoughts or from the void she was like from the void so I'm like and then a number had come to my head 20 so I tell her 20 and it, I, I gave her all the numbers she didn't put the numbers on she was just taking a piss. She so didn't even. You didn't even ch we check didn't test it. We didn't test it scientifically, though. Let's be real here. Not a lot about this is scientific. Yeah. But. Um, no, but they could have been the winning numbers. <laughs> who, who knows uh, now? Well, yeah, I mean, that's. It would definitely be the time to do it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so then, you know, she's talking to me and whatever. But then what happens is I kind of, while I'm laying in bed, I've got my eyes closed. That's when the shit goes real. I so I went to the space. I could travel through time everywhere. I could travel to the infinite expanse of the universe. But the universe is infinite, so I never got to the end. I could zoom out like a picture. Mm -hmm. I could zoom out of the whole universe, keep zooming, constantly zooming, infinite, all the way through. I could go to the beginning 
for the singularity of the Big Bang. I could see everything. It was wild. It was th th that was a trip. So, are there any deep secrets of the universe? It's infinite. The Big Bang is infinite, infinite as well. Also, in it, like it's not even like obviously this is just bullshit that came out of my mind, right? Yeah. But what I got is the Big Bang like ripped through dimensional space. So it's like bang in here, but also bang. It's a bang, a single bang that banged throughout every layer. Oh, I can't. <laughs> every layer. It's one the bang that banged it all. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That's it. Sounds insane. <laughs> but I was. I must have been insane. Okay, so it was. That was that night, though, right? Yeah, but throughout the whole night, I was conscious aware in this dream world did your eyes close at all yep my eyes were closed your eyes are closed did but, you wake up refreshed no i was awake the whole night okay dream 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 awakeness okay so did this lead into the next morning no i just w woke up and everything was gone i lost my superpowers So that's the mushroom trip. So that was the mushroom trip. So you got more out of the your night Hell yeah. than anything else. But that's what they say about this mushroom. They say it's a dreaming mushroom. Oh. Now, you did say, though, that you didn't boil this. So you didn't convert right. the isotonic acid? Ibotonic. Ibotonic acid into muscimol. You mm -hmm. didn't do I that didn't do part. That. So you got maybe 20% of, well... You didn't get most of it. I didn't get all that, all that yeah. I could. Okay. That's that's where the next uh, mushroom experience comes. Did you do this again? I tried, but it tasted so fucking bad that. So, much later, like fucking. Hold your nose. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's like a taste you've never. It does not work. Well, if you hold your nose, you can't taste anything. What I, well, what I did, another thing I did is I tried to like get some milk. And then I go <laughs> with a, it's like nah. Don't, so it was just straight ass. It is straight ass. It's like mm. nah, mate. Well, the like I said, the first time I withstood it, but the second time when I boiled it, it was absolutely vile. You didn't try drinking when it was warm, did you? Yeah, like a hot tea. Well, any time that you heat something up, the flavor becomes more potent. So. Right. What you should. I'm not a uh, Amanita Muscaria expert here by any means because I've never done it. But just in general, if you're going to drink something and you don't want much of a taste, drink it cold. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, I might get some more. We'll, we'll test that theory. Uh, anyway, so the next time I tried, I bought the 32 grams, but I currently wasted it. I put all the 32 grams on the pot boiled it and it was like fucking seven cups worth of tea i drank one cup and i was chill i was so fucking chill it was like <sighs> 10 times the effect of eating the caps i was so chill after. now sorry not to interrupt but could you blend it and boil it then wouldn't that make it more readily accept accessible yeah you probably could yeah and then you just take one big espresso shot and... yeah but I didn't plan ahead. I'm quite dumb. So what I did is I I made like a pot, like a fucking witch's cauldron full of fucking water. Because like I, how big were we talking? Oh, it was huge. It was like a big, big fucking. Pot. Oh, okay. So this was this was rather. Yeah, large. because you have to boil it for twenty minutes. So I thought, oh, it's going to condense down, but it didn't condense enough. You know what I mean? Put a cap on it. It won't. No, I had a cap on it. I must have put weight. I don't. I'm not experienced in the kitchen by any means. There we go. I was like, if I would know how to cook, this would have gone a lot better. But, but next time, you, you learn. Though. So next time, yeah, what I'll do is I'll put just enough for one cup. Yeah. And I'll see put how Put a cap goes. on it. Yeah. That way when it boils, it, it just... goes back into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll do that next time. and I'll just drink one 32 gram. But make cup. sure that it's cold, cold when you drink it. Hell yeah. Now, the musk... Musk mold can't be converted back into. Nah. Okay. So that's what I'll do next time. And it, and also it was a bit gross. It, it the whole house stunk. Like this 
these mushrooms gross disgusting that's why i'm i don't really know if i want to do it again but I okay think I, I think i'll do it again so you did that the first time second mm -hmm. time did you really actually get any effect out of it hell yeah okay yeah well i didn't get any visual okay because i only had the one cup yeah but it was the chillest i drank the cup so you got real mellow i was so mellow i was like yeah like you know it turns your head off to, to give you that your head goes off completely and you could you could literally just sit here in the room by yourself and be totally happy. Well, that sounds nice. It is really good. But I didn't get any visuals from it. I just had the one cup. And uh, I only had the one cup because I was in the kitchen doing some crazy shit, yeah, with this, you know, boiling pot. And uh, my wife, she was like, don't kill yourself. Don't fucking kill yourself with these mushrooms. And I was like, I'm not going to kill. And then she got, to my, she got to my head, so I only had the one cup. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of something that can relate that I can relate to on that level because obviously I've never done mushrooms, never smoked weed, never done anything outside of uh, really beer and liquor. But occasionally, and not very often, like if I go to the cabin or something, I'll buy like a pack of cigarettes or something like that. Yeah. Or I'll get a cigar or something along those lines. Um. But if you haven't smoked a cigarette in a while, and you smoke a cigarette, dude, talk about head rush. Like a good yeah. mellow head rush, you can just lean back and like. Oh. Mm. Now, I that's the only thing I could think. Now, have you you've done that every now and then? Nah, like, it's not. It's not, it doesn't compare. No, nope. not even close. No, not even close. That's a big head rush. Well, it's a mellow. Feeling. Well, maybe, but how long does that last? 20 minutes. A couple minutes. Maybe. Not long. No. Well, this. So that's what they. I mean, I've heard it's like chasing the dragon or something like that, but I think most people say that in reference to heroin. Which yeah. Obviously, I yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. any experience with. Yeah, this was. Uh, this is like. It's just. You just. I could. Like, it's like your brain don't even work. You like this. Okay, so now you drank one cup of this, mm -hmm. and you had like seven cups left, and you just pitched just it, right? Got rid of them. Okay, I wasted. So, to get back to our main story, yeah, here, yeah. So that you did this. When was the last time you did this? It was probably December. That. So you did it in November. You did it in December, and then when did you see Jesus? On Saturday. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is <laughs> this is March fourteenth <coughs> now. Okay. 18th right now. Well, it's so, the 18th oh, now. Yeah, I probably saw him on the 14th. Okay, so it's, it's Monday right now, right? Yeah. Sorry, night shift. Every day is tomorrow. And 15th? Every day is yesterday. 16th. Okay, so on the 16th of March, you saw Jesus. Yep. Okay, so you haven't done this since I have not touched it. December. And I never really wanted to, to do it, to be honest. Again. But I kind of do now. All right, so you haven't done anything since December. Yeah. No weed, no nothing. No. Okay. Got drunk that time. Ew. Well, yeah, <laughs> we got we got pretty toasted that weekend. Yeah. That was a couple weeks ago. Um, but you're thinking that your mushroom experiences are related? So to your seeking seeing of Jesus Christ? I have no clue. <laughs> actually, no. Yeah, actually, let me let me try and tie that up. So after okay. the mushroom, yes, I didn't. I was searching the universe to try and find God. That, like my, that's my whole life search to try and find God. Yeah, I didn't find anything relating to God in the universe, hmm. um, except its absolute amazing vastness, impossible, impossible infinity. Yeah, and I've always believed in in God in some shape or form. So to not find anything on this trip that to me seemed like reality, obviously. It probably wasn't, you know, but to not see anything just kind of depressed me. So then I went through like two or three weeks of depression because I was searching for God. Now, find. is this depression or is this? No, I was depressed. Nothing I didn't even, I totally lost interest in life. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when the doctor, that's we talked about it. That's when the doctor basically said I've got depression and I was like, Need to figure something out. So you think maybe 
these mushrooms can cause depression in people? Yeah. I think after, because, like, when I said I took the mushrooms, the next day my superpowers were gone. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. It feels like you lost your powers. Okay, so maybe not a good idea for people that already have, like, issues. I mean, you're not going to, I mean, you might find God. Some some people do. I mean, if you're depressed, just fucking go on a hike or something. Don't do magic mushrooms. Okay, so no, no, uh, MSC. Amanita Muscaria. Amanita Muscaria. So no Amanita Muscaria for people that think they have some kind of depression already. Well, I don't know. Maybe microdose. Because you can... Micro- well, that's right. You did say you, you were only supposed to take like three grams and you took like yeah, fucking two of them. Actually, microdosing to get that mellow effect where you can be happy just fucking laying in dog shit. You, you can be totally... Wait, whoa, what? Like... The effect like, <laughs> you can be having, like, I don't know. I think you could. That's really that's the superpower. No joke. These mushrooms. So now we just said though that you could have like a mellow feeling off sick. Now I'm not advocating cigarettes, but like you know, like if you're depressed, cigarette might help too. Yeah, maybe. So think on, think about that, guys. You want to smoke? Three guys. You want to take mushrooms? But like microdose, like take like 0.5 grams and see how that feels. And I guarantee, I, well, I don't guarantee it. <laughs> it might work, might not, you know. It's on your fucking conscience, mate, not mine. But these Emanita Muscaria, got, got it. it. Completely legal. Yeah, totally legal, yeah. So, and actually, uh, they, they use, there's some studies that use, not Emanita Muscaria, they use psilocybin for depression. So, um, I don't know. Look into it. Do some research. I heard a guy, this was, I don't know if I was watching Vice or what the hell it was, but some guy, I mean, had pretty much the worst experience any man could have. His only two sons committed suicide. Like, mm. that's pretty fucking bad. All right. And when they were, obviously he had depression. Like, I'm not so big on calling things depression, but like, I'll give you that. Like yeah. that that one, That's like you, you've got depression. Yeah. Like you're fucking sad beyond belief. And they treated him with ketamine, I think it was. Mm. Like they they gave him injections of ketamine to try to like get this guy out of his funk. I was like, but okay, so but, yeah, I I get it. There yeah. there's certain things where they can. Do. There's studies into it. Yeah, yeah. different chemical chemicals can help with depression. Yeah. So, uh, where was I in the story? Well, you're, I mean, we kind of, re- I didn't do anything since then. You have, no, we never really did touch base on what we started out with saying that, you know, you saw Jesus. Okay, so I got some kind of depression for like, yeah, yeah, weeks, yeah. And I was trying to, you know, look in, because before this, I was like all into Hinduism, but it just didn't didn't feel right so now when you said you're into hinduism did you mean like you believed in all the gods or you just kind of like your their idea of peace and happiness was i believe you're looking for i believed in everything all the gods i believed in all the gods but all the gods are one god because they all there's one god yeah and he shines through these people these gods and they shine using god's shining light that's what that's how it's explained okay yeah, whatever. All right. Um, anyway. Well, I'm not trying to discount it. I'm just saying, like, okay, we are getting off topic, and that's my fault. It's all right. But anyways. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was looking for answers, blah, 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 and then this is the part I don't understand. Something was telling me to reconsider Jesus. Okay. Because all my life I never considered Jesus because... I don't know. I used to joke about it and shit. It's so on the nose. It's right in front of you everywhere you go. Yeah. Kind of like, like, just, like, ah, it's nothing. Nothing can be right. I've met that. some Jesus people in my life and I'm like, I don't, uh, it's kind of weird. I don't really want to do that. You know, some people were like crazy. Like Mormons people. or like what? Well, all of them. 
Like, there's some crazy Jesus people, isn't there? Like, there's like this guy, you know, I, you know, I talked to God Pentecostal, yesterday. Yeah. God told me to, God told me to ask you this. God told me to ask you this. And I'm like, did he? Or did you just think? Did you just have a thought in your head? So, some, something threw me away from Christianity. And anyway, now my body, now my, something inside of me is saying to reconsider Jesus. So, over the next few months, I started reading the Bible. I started considering Jesus. I started because another thing I didn't, I didn't, couldn't get my head around in Christianity is the Trinity, because I believe there's one God. But it, but then I uh, had some debates with some people, and now I understand the Trinity being one God. Still, it's the same thing. Uh, that's a different episode. Anyway. So yeah, now I'm just looking into Christianity more. Oh. Going fast forward to Saturday, mm-hmm. I was um, I was tired in the afternoon, so I went. I wanted to take an afternoon nap. I got into bed. Obviously, the bedroom door is closed, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw like a gold light golden light so not like a shadow or anything like that no it was it was like sometimes you see a shadow sometimes if you're alone you you might see some you see something yeah and you look over and there's not there yeah yeah. something like that and you go my imagination yep and then you get a shiver up your spine and go but um anyway i saw this gold gold thing and it would it was like that and i was like whoa and it caught my attention so i looked over there then Standing there was this figure of a man, I guess it was a man. Yeah, it was a man in a in a robe and it, and it was bright gold. And and I looked at his face and it was just it was too bright to see his face. And then I, f- I felt safe. I didn't feel scared. That's the another thing that's kind of weird. What, 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 you would feel scared. Or, or, you're seeing something insane. You, you, why would you not feel scared? I don't know. I've never felt. I've never seen this. So then, I um, I felt safe, like you know, no nothing to worry about. And then I just, this thought came into my head, Jesus. And then it vanished. Hmm. That's the I saw Jesus. What do you say? What do you say to that? Like. How do you continue? And how do you continue? I just uh, that's it. Lost for words. So this was Saturday. Yeah. Uh, oh, actually, there is more to the story. Okay. So this was Saturday. I saw Jesus, and um, I didn't. I, my thought at the time was, I'm just not going to tell anyone. They're going to people are going to think I'm actually insane. So I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm not going to tell my wife. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm going to die with this. Yeah. So now we're putting it on for the world to hear, right? Of course. No, but this is <laughs> no, but this is weird. This is kind of how how weird stuff is. Yeah. I was. I think. I think we went to Chipotle or something. Me and my wife. Yeah. And then as we were driving back, out of nowhere, she said, or "Was it out of nowhere?" As we were driving back, I made the point. I think we passed the church or something. And I said, oh, that church looks interesting. Do you know what religion is or something? And then we started talking about religion. That's when she said, something weird happened to me today. And I was like, what? She said, she said, I think I saw Jesus. I'm not shit. I'm not, this is totally insane. I wasn't going to tell anyone. She said, I think I saw Jesus. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah, I was, when I was reversing, I, reversing, the to, car yeah the car out of the garage she said she looked back and she saw a man in a robe just looked like how you'd expect jesus to be and i said was it just a normal man or was it like a ghostly figure she said it was just a normal guy she said and then he vanished i said you are fucking lying she said no I, she said i, I promise that i saw that why would i lie i said because today i saw jesus she didn't believe me. She thought I was joking as well. I said, no, I'm not lying. I wasn't going to tell a soul. 
but since you just told me it's so that's that's it's just weird it is and so since she told me i told her and we just that's where it ended i guess that's where the story ends i wasn't going to tell anyone and then have you you done anything i don't know like i mean well i've have you gone to church or you? Yeah. No, but what I did do, because what everyone I told, I've been fucking telling everyone who'll listen about it. To be honest, no, I don't. It's just, uh, it's just so weird that I wasn't going to tell anyone. Then, this, then my my wife also saw Jesus. It's weird. So now yeah. I'm just telling everyone, and I'm like, well, what do you think I should do? And uh, a lot of answers are saying I should I should pray and ask ask to see it again. I'm not sure. Praying's not a bad option. Uh, um, praying for things, I don't know if that's always the greatest idea. But, but just in general, talk with God. Yeah, that's. Uh, I did pray. I asked to see something again, just to let me know that I want. I'm not batshit crazy. Huh. Or if there's a message, because another thing, uh, my mother-in-law, she said a golden. Apparently, all the archangels have got colors or something. And she said, "Gold is Angel Gabriel, and it's a message. So you need to ask God for the <clears> message." I don't know. There's different in the passages of the Bible. Like Ezekiel says some interesting things about what he saw, and you know, the angel holding a flame, yeah, flaming sword of the Garden of Eden. You know, Moses when he saw the burning bush, it was a angel i don't know that that one that passage is a little interesting because everyone says burning bush but if you actually read it or listen to an audiobook yeah it does say about an angel being there yeah like like a angel was there behind the burning bush or something along those lines it was something there's there's more to it than just a burning bush yeah but that's all anybody ever talks about so there's a lot of different stuff about them talking, like what angels look like and stuff of that nature. Scary as fuck, are they? Apparently. Well, I, I don't know. Do they say, "Do not be afraid"? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, there was an. I went to Catholic school as a kid, and we had religion class. Okay, so it was just a class that we took. You didn't think it was. It sounds weird to a lot of people, but at the time, it was just a fucking class that you took. So no, they really. Didn't wasn't out of the normal or anything. But, you know, you hear stories and stuff from the, the priest who gave the religion class and different things like that. And the one day, uh, the, the one priest gave a story about, arch, or not at archangels, um, guardian angels. Mm. Talking about them being existing and stuff like that. And they said everybody's got a guardian angel. But I don't know. I've never seen, I've never thought that I've seen an angel or anything along those lines, but they did tell a story, and I'll tell the story just to, since we're on the topic of this yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Um, there was this priest, and it's been a long time, so, like I said, this was when I was like yeah, seven. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, story, I'm, yeah, I'm 30 now, so this is like when I was seven. Um, there was this priest who, he was trying to help out in these bad areas of whatever city. And one day, um, somehow he was helping people out and he went into a house or something. And these two guys got a hold of him. I don't know if they strapped him to a chair, or they got a hold of him, something like that. And they made him, they forced him into a position where they're like, Have you ever done drugs? And he's like, No. And they're like, Well, you're going to fucking do it today, buddy. Okay. I don't I don't know why. But anyways, I think they were, I think he said they were gonna like shoot him up with heroin or something like that. So they put him on a chair and they strap him down. And they're about to give him an injection and all of a sudden they look up and they just fucking like Bolt. Bolt. Yeah, like pure terror immediately run away. Hmm. And his priest what the fuck is this? So, you know, like what you know, like it's a crazy day, you know, like so he somehow managed to get himself free and he's running around like he's just like i don't know if he's looking for these guys or he by chance runs into one of them and he basically corners them like hey man what the fuck was that about 
that's a priest, so he probably didn't say fuck, but, <laughs> but he said, uh, you know, like, what's, you know, like, tell me what happened back there. He said, look, all I know is we saw Rambo with wings, and he basically, we just got the hell out of there. <laughs> and I, I don't know, but, like, this is, a, this is a story, I'm not making this up. Yeah, yeah. This is a story that I heard. So do we have our, our, our guardian angels? I don't know. What do angels look like? I really don't know. Rambo with wings. <laughs> yeah, well, he's like, yeah. Okay, so like that's an interpretation. You know, if you read some of this stuff from Ezekiel, you'll see, you'll hear like um, there's, I don't know if there's different choirs of angels, like seraphim and all that kind of stuff. And archangels are actually like on a lower tier, I think. Um, so, th- but there's like you know, some have like a head with like multiple different Five wings and eyes oh. yeah yeah it's oh, just like some very it sounds like a trip almost like it sounds like something somebody was high i don't know mm-hmm. i really couldn't tell you but there is a lot of reference to angels in the bible and you hear people talking about angels and but like we're all the whole thing that god is talking about this was you did mushrooms like so like i don't know if a lot of the stuff that people were saying is Related to drug induced experiences. Huh. Who knows? I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff though. Yeah, so I, I don't know if I'm still fucking high off mushrooms. <laughs> well, what's I've the heard, deal? I don't I, know. I've heard that every, I mean, everything about your body is just biochemistry. Yeah. You know, obviously, you're made up of. Cells, your cells are made up of a vast array of different kinds of molecules, which are made up of atoms. So it's just interactions of positive and negative charges in the correct manner and orientation. I hate to make it so damn crude, but that's what it is. Um, but if you take a chemical, you know, you're they're going to interact yeah, with yeah. other chemicals. So... Like when you take a drug, you you can have inhibitors, you can have, you know, like. So what you're saying right now is, I could be the next Spider-Man. No, <laughs> that's not. What that I mean. was that's, that, that's and you could be. That's not where I was going a with superhero. this. Superhero. I don't. I don't know. That well. You're saying that the mushrooms could have changed my chemicals in such a way. That I'm gonna get some. It definitely had an interaction with your neurochemistry. I know mm. that much at least. Did it alter them? Did it cause you know your your synapse pathways to change? You know, like did it? You know, they're they are trying to you know as far as like Alzheimer's patients, yeah, Parkinson's it's, it's, patients, it's, it's, like they're it, trying to get them to because the big thing with Parkinson's is like. A lot of your, I can't remember all the different pathways we did this in grad school. I got the paperwork upstairs. But, like, the one connection, like, you don't start seeing Parkinson's symptoms until, like, almost 80 or 90% of the connections are dead. Like, they, like the actual cells themselves die out. Mm-hmm. So you don't start seeing the symptoms of it until after, like, 80% of the it's cells dying. are dead. Mm-hmm. So, like, one of the areas of focus in neuro, neuroscience is to see if they can regrow them. You know, like, can you get, how, how can we do that? Because, obviously, you don't want the disease. It's not cool. It's a bad way to die. It's not cool. There's all these Parkinson's is not cool, kids. Don't play with, no, it's like, it is bad. I mean, like, yeah. if you've ever seen someone with Parkinson's, it's, it's a bad way to go. So, it's all chemistry, biochemistry. That field is looking into that kind of so, stuff. Is mushrooms a way to do that? Can they change your brain chemistry? I, maybe. Yeah, I think they can. I think I read something that people who take psilocybin, it can, some people, it can permanently alter the brain. Well, I mean, everyone's heard a story at some point or another about a dude that got a bad batch of drugs and he's fucked up for life. Well, Clearly, it did something to his brain. We know yeah, that yeah, much, yeah. at least. So, yes, it, they, can, they can fuck your brain up. So, the next question, should I tell my doctor? 
that I saw a vision of Jesus. I mean, he's just going to tell you you're hallucinating. Hallucinating. What, um, six months after the fact? Well, your doctor knows as well as any mm-hmm. sane human that if you do drugs, it can mess with your mind. It can change the way you think. Um, so, I'm going to take some more. Okay. <laughs> Let you know how it goes. Yeah. I mean... Well, you've heard the story of... I mean, this is all over the internet. You heard the story about Robin Williams, right? When he was making Mrs. Delphire. Mm-hmm. Like, the kid that... The boy that was in the movie as his son said that he went into Robin's um, trailer at the end of it, and Robin was, like, really depressed. And, you know, there's sometimes... I can't remember if I've already said this on the podcast. And, uh, after it, I leave this house, yeah, everything just goes... Yeah. Like, it's like we're just we like we're talking about? shit, but yeah. apparently he went in there and Robin was really depressed and has hands on his head and all this kind of stuff. And he told the kid, you know, like I did drugs, you know, like a decade ago. I got off of them, but I know it messed with my head and I'm depressed ever since then. So yes, there's definitely drugs, mushrooms, whatever you want to call it, anything that has a hallucinogenic effect or some kind of yeah you uh, get reality some effects. Altering, fact, yeah, yeah, it can mess with your brain chemistry, and it can change the way you think. Sometimes for your entire life. So, be, I would be careful. Just, oh, sounds good. Well, nah, just saying, be careful with what you decide to do. Yeah, you two, you two, three guys. Yeah, don't, don't just go out there and start doing a shit ton of drugs. Cause it's not good. Although I would say, probably, I've never done, I've never had marijuana in any way. When I was in college, uh, my roommates, they, they were real big. At least my sophomore year, they were real big weed smokers. Good guys. Uh, you know, I don't have anything against any of them. I just didn't do it. Um, but I don't think there'd be anything wrong with taking some weed. Everyone's I've thought about it. it. Everyone's fucking doing it now, aren't they? Well, I've, I've actually talked to a couple people, and they're like, dude, just try it. I'm like, eh. I don't, I don't know where to go. I don't want to go get a, a card. Because apparently, if you get a card, you can't have like a gun. Yeah, you can't have a gun or something next, along those lines here in sense. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, Pennsylvania is weird though for it because like this. I, I, well, off topic on drugs, but gambling. Yeah, I tried to open a fucking gambling account and there's gambling, so, drugs, guns. They all relate. There's so <laughs> many strict uh, policies on gambling in Pens. If yeah, that's the like, if you get an app on your phone, it needs to know your exact location because. If you're gambling inside Pennsylvania, there's certain rules that they have to follow. Really? The websites, yeah. Hmm. Some websites, well, if you're in Pennsylvania, they won't even let you on. I know that you can't, at least it used to be this way. I don't know if it still is. If you go to, like, sheets or something along those lines and you try to get, a, like, a lottery ticket, mm. you cannot buy them with a credit card. Yeah, It has can't. to be with yeah, cash or still, a debit card. Yeah. Still legit. Find yeah. it. Being there, I don't know. It's, I mean, I know I, I briefly said that, but drugs, alcohol, gambling, like it all kind of starts sex, drugs, rock and roll, you know, like that. You can all group all that stuff together because it, it feeds off of your or really it's dopamine, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it gets off of your pleasure sensors mm-hmm. in the brain, like you know. Your risk versus reward. Oh, speaking of, I have some bets on um, some English soccer matches, yeah? Just so you know what I'm talking about. Um, I've got some bets on it. What time? Really? It should The match is on right now. Uh, but I put the bets on earlier, yeah? Just to, What's the, what, what teams? Uh, Bradford versus... I don't know. But I think Bradford's going to lose. That's what I'm hoping, because I get paid if I do. If they do. It's so good though, cause like I put the fucking money on you, and I'm I've already got a buzz just thinking about it. Like I'm already like buzzed up. Well, that's like uh, remember that night? It's actually about the Shiba Inu, uh, yeah. uh cryptocurrency yeah, yeah. like jumped up a shit ton. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's any anything involving uh, the potential for monetary. Um, yeah. I've got this bet on right. I've got this bet on right now. I bet on seven different games over the next week. Like mm-hmm. week period, if they all come in, I get like I pay I put one dollar on. If they all come in, I get like two hundred and fifty dollars, 
chances are it's not going to work. My brother guessed it, right? He got fucking 800 quid. 800 pounds. Why do they call it quid? Oh, quid. I don't know. It sounds good. I call, it, I call it quids, like dollars. If I'm talking to Loani, my wife, I'll, I'll say, oh, you can, like, can I spend 10 quid? I don't ask her every time, but, you know, can I spend 700 quid? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Because, well, we share the finance. So yeah, yeah, I understand that. In a, in a marriage, so you have to communicate when you're making a large purchase. Well, the reason I ask is, like, if you say, like, 10 bucks, like, I know where the term 10 bucks comes from. Yeah, but I can't say that because it sounds like I'm saying books. You know, books, B O O K S. Books, oh. But, like, quid, is that like an actual word? Is there something called a quid? I know what squid is, but I don't know what a quid is. We, I, we just, I've always said quid. Quid, pound, uh, what else you call it? Like a buck, the American terminology yeah. for that is it was a buckskin. Like, yeah, they yeah, literally yeah. used those as currency, like skinning a, a deer. Yeah, maybe in England we uh, exchanged squids, and then over the years it quid. changed to quid. You heard it first. No, I'm, yeah. just, I'm sure there's some story for it. I'd like to figure that out. So. Yeah, so we call them quids. And uh, I'll put one quid on, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get 250 back if all my teams come in. But like I said, my, bro my brother actually did it the other day, and he got 800, 800 pounds. Wow. Which is like $1,200 from $1. That's true. The exchange rate, um, the euro, or not the euro. Uh, the pound, it is more in the dollar now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you got $1,200 from $1. That's crazy. The exchange rates, there's some, there's got to be a way to bet on that. Exchange rates. Just, I mean, like, they have to have, like, some kind of, like, Robin Hood for exchange rates or something like that. Well, they take you, they, well, they take your money, don't they? Like, you can't just exchange. I don't know. I just feel like there's got to be a way to, yeah, like if I have if I have um one dollar mm -hmm. and I want to exchange it into pounds, I'm the ex the exchange rate's like point eight. Well, I, th I think the way to do it would be to buy precious metals or something that yeah. have like a relatively. I mean, precious metals they do go up and down with the stock market and everything like that. But say like in Brazil, um, one dollar is roughly five dollars down there. But what I could do is I could say like their their value goes down a little bit or something like that and all of a sudden one dollar six dollars and then I go down there and I exchange like ten dollars for you know sixty dollars down there and I go get like sixty dollars worth of gold there and then or I then you bring it back and sell the gold here. Yeah, you'd get more dollars for it. Well, if I would buy the if I would buy the gold cheap when it's cheaper, how is that? I would, I would buy it. I would buy more gold with like sixty there. Or I would. Well, what what happens? I know gold is cheaper in Brazil. Because I've thought about that going down there and just getting shit ton of jewelry sometime. Just Make, like coming back and selling it. Yeah, just come back like fucking like Mr. T. You know, just like a bunch of necklaces and rings and all kinds of shit. You just could just, like, and you could also wear it all, couldn't you? Could you wear it all in the plane? You'd have to take it off through security. Well, I know. So. Won't take up space in your luggage, would it? You're not allowed. You're only allowed to have a certain amount of jewelry that you that you can have in oh. your possession, as in like your carry on or stuff like that. But if I just go down there and I get like three rings and like a couple of gold necklaces and a fucking grill, like I, I don't see anybody really being able to say jack shit because that's my, that is my clothing. Yeah. 25 fucking necklaces. Well, but and that's the thing. It's like you can buy gold cheaper in Brazil than you can in the United States. So it makes sense to do that. And I've, we've, we've talked about that before. It's like, well, you know, why not buy like a nice necklace or something like that? Come back here and just sell it, you know? Mm. do that yeah. i mean it's not like you're it's like it's playing within the rules but it's like you know making it's like taking advantage of loopholes oh speaking of loopholes i heard this guy he uh he found a loophole in the financial system he got a credit card and um they had like 10 percent back 
on what you spend. So what he would do is he'd buy gift cards or something for, let's say he bought a ten dollar gift card mm-hmm. or a hundred dollar gift card. He got ten percent back. So he bought the gift card for a hundred dollars. He got ten percent back. So he basically paid ninety dollars for the gift card. So there's a hundred dollars on it. So I think he somehow got cash, or maybe it was like a money order. So he got a hundred dollars on a money order, and then he paid the credit card off. And then he had ten dollars left over. That's that's pretty smart. And then he just kept doing that. Ten, 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 ten dollars over a period of time. Yeah. Ten percent back on purchases. <laughs> Fucking do that. You get ten dollars back every As long as there's no fee for the money order or something like that. I don't think there was at the time. There probably is now. Yeah, there probably is now. He found that one. Apparently he made three hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure they tried to sue him. Somehow, I'm sure they tried, but it seems legit to me. It seems legit, but I'm sure, like any time that you do something where you're making a profit and no nobody's get, else is getting their beak wet, like they're gonna try to come after you. Yeah, but that's I Which mean, it's fucked up. I mean, really. I mean, th- I I was thinking the same thing, but three hundred thousand on the grand scheme of things, it's not that much, is it? Mm. You know. No, it's not. But the thing is, nobody's happy with somebody else making money when they're not. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, you're taking advantage of our system. It's like you're taking advantage of people all around the world trying to get them to pay like 20% interest rates. Yeah. Like, I mean, just think about fuck? this. <laughs> think about this. It cost you 300000 but now you can lock it up and it's never going to happen again. It's I found a, a flaw in your business model and now it's never going to happen again. Well, I mean, it's just like a... Fucking gambling. We talked about gambling. Vegas, yeah. like counting cards, is not illegal. Like you, you're literally using simple statistics to be able to figure out what cards are going to be drawn next, betting on it, and making profit. But then casinos are like, we we have the right to uh, ban whoever we want. Yeah, exactly. You doing it? And it's like. What the fuck is that? That's like total bullshit. Well, there's there's guys who have completely been banned from like all casinos. Just yeah, they, they make too much money. No, absolutely. It, that's a, that's very true. There's a lot of people that are kicked out of casinos because they make money off of it, and the casinos are like, we just want dumb fucks to be able Basically, to make our money off of. Now why would you even go to a casino knowing that? Yeah, and that's it's like bl- bright, flashy lights and all that kind of stuff. But it's like I can't. I I have a an I just have a disdain for them because of that. It's like you are literally saying if you're smart we don't want you. We're actually going to kick you out and then you can't ever come back or yeah. you can't ever do it's anything dumb again. People. Yeah, it's like we just want dumb fucks and fuck you. And people go. Yeah, I know, but it's like what the fuck? Like how, what kind of business model is that? It's mm-hmm. like fuck you, you're smart. We don't want you. We want dumb people that we can take advantage of. Credit cards. Oh, well, you know, like if you did this thing that that guy did, fuck you. We're going to try to sue you or something along those lines. We only want stupid people that we can leech off of for the rest of our lives. That's so fucked up. It's not even funny. Yep. Yeah. Fucked up that. Hell, student loans are the same way. Yeah. They're fucking terrible. Dude, I I paid over $110,000 of student debt off. I only have a hundred, I only have like a, I think it's like less than 11000 left. Like, I got really lucky just because uh, my mom let me live at her house rent free. Mm-hmm. But my the stipulation was I was going to put 2000 a month towards my student loans. Like, it was yeah. wild. Yeah. So I paid, I paid a lucky. shit ton of, a lot well, of people that, well, yeah, but it's like there's a lot of people that they go out of state, you know, thinking they're like, oh, this is going to be making a lot of. You know, it's like you are better to just go get a trade as a plumber, make a shit ton of money as a plumber yeah. without any student debt at all, and just live a good life. I mean, truly, a craftsman, like I know this kid that I uh, work with, he, uh, he became an electrician. He got he passed the test and got like the highest level of electrician that we that we have at the mm-hmm. building, and he's making like that's probably like over thirty three to thirty six dollars an hour. He's eighteen. No debt. No debt. None at all. And he's making that. He's living. I'm assuming he's living at home. I, I, 
I don't know the guy's personal business, but if he's living at home right now, fuck it out. Dude, if he's living at home, he's paying like $36 an hour with no fucking debt. He's saving us plus yeah, Oh, hell yeah. I mean, if he would invest in real estate, dude, come on. Like he could, well, Can you imagine living at home and <laughs> investing in real estate? <laughs> well, you know, maybe. I mean, he's 18. He's he's not gotten to yeah, the point true, where he's true. probably pissed his parents off enough to kick him true, out of the true. house just yet. Yeah. So, like, imagine that. It's like he could go get a property or something like that as a as an investment or do anything. I mean, really, $36 an hour, that's, that's pretty freaking yeah, trades, good. trades is a really good thing to get into. Definitely. All you'd have to do is study enough to pass a couple tests Go into it, become decent at what you do. You don't even have to be the best. Just be decent. Do that, and you can you can take care of yourself. Like, if I would have all the money that I put towards my student loans right now, I could literally own a fucking house with that. Yeah. Not put a down payment on. I could own a house with that. It's over 120. I mean, that was, I paid that in... Over the course of five, six years, probably six years. Mm. Over the course, did Fucking that. Hell. Well, you paid it off. No, not all of it, but oh. I paid like one hundred ten thousand oh, dollars worth of it. That's good shit. Now, when me and Michelle got together. You know, like we made we made plans to do X, Y, and Z over the course of our life, make investments, do this kind of stuff, and we we worked together. So, like, fortunately, she ended up getting a guy that had like. Thirty thousand dollars worth of student loans. So, like, we but we work together on some of that stuff. So, but what I'm saying is, like, for the majority of it, probably down to like hundred thousand, I paid that off just because my mom let me live rent free. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was that. If I would have that money, man, dude, I could do a lot of fucking stuff with that. Yeah, I think it's a big like, dude. College is one of my biggest regrets. I think we're timed. College, scam, don't do it. Catch Unless you're going to med school or becoming a lawyer, fuck it, don't do it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, guys, we're out of time on this one, but we're going to do another one right after this. Yeah. Again, another hour or something. So. We can make that our next discussion. What? College. I mean, we can. Oh, yeah, actually, that would be interesting. That would be an interesting one. Yes. All right. So that's episode uh, nine. Yep. All right, see you guys. Take care. Yep, see you. That was pretty good. Uh...